Hello everyone, this is Professor Kent. Today we are going to go through chapter 19. Chapter 19, we're going to be talking pensions. So first, before we go further in this chapter, we needed to know what pension is. Pension is, is an arrangement uh, which an employer provides benefit to their employees after they retire. I know that you, all of you guys are so young that you, you are not retired yet, so you, are, you don't know anything about pension. So that's why we were teaching you a little bit about pension. You could have a uh, parent that retired or you could have a uncle or aunt or a grandparent that retired and they're receiving a pension um, at, up from their employer. So now when we're talking about a, a little bit about pension before we go further into details into it, how it works and what do we need to know about it. The way I think of it is you have an employer. It could employer could be a company, it could be an organization, it could be any anything. So you, you have a company or you have an employer, what they do is they contribute. When they contri they make a contribution, what do they make contribution to? They make a contribution to a pension fund. This pension fund is monitored by a third party. It could be monitored by the bank, it could be mon monitored by um, and another association. So in other words, uh, the um, what the company does is they contribute money into the pension, pension fund. This pension fund uh, the, is done by another, like I said, they're by another company, another, uh, another uh, bank. So what they do is they do their own bank, uh, they do their own bookkeeping. So we don't care what they do with their bookkeeping. We only worry about from the company point of view, what do we have to do um, what do we have to expense every year? That's what we are, we are trying to figure out. What should we, what should the company expense every year so that they have enough money to pay their uh, employees when they retire? So now it goes into the pension fund and then the third party that is responsible for the pension fund, what they will do is they will be investing that money. They will be investing that money. When they invest money, money could go up or money could go down. So now if they invest into the stock market, uh, now the stock market is, if now, now at the time that the stock market is bad, the investment could go down. If now the good times will come soon too, so the investment could go up. So they are the one who, the third party is monitoring that pension fund. And they are the one who's responsible uh, for paying the benefit to the employees. So they are the one who's issuing the checks to the uh, employees when they are uh, uh, they are retired so they are the one who is issuing the checks so you have an employer they make a contribution to a pension fund that pension fund is monitored by third company that third company is investing the money and they are the one who are paying the benefits to the retiree and what we needed to know now now the other part is the contribution when we think of a contribution the employer doesn't know how much to contribute. You have a third party. Uh, it's called an actuary. They are the they they are the people who are good at maths. They are the one statistically. What they do is they are the one who come and tell the company how much money they should contribute into the fund. So when they're they're telling the company how much they should uh, contribute to the fund, what things do they look at? They look at the, how many employees the company has, they look at the age of those employees, the uh, gender of those employees, why gender, maybe some uh, female lives longer than the male. It could be other reasons. Um, maybe some of the uh, some of the employees are smoking, um, so that they can they, they take that into consideration. Uh, some health issues some people has um, at the age, like those are the things they look at. They look at the employee, they look at how long they've been um, they've been working for the for the for the company, the age of the employees, the gender, 
um, all those things, the years of service, uh, how much money they're getting as a salary. So those are the things they, they take into account. And then they come up with the number saying that this is how much you should contribute into the fund for the employees. Now, now this leads us, our, us to our next um, next part. We wanted to now, um, when we, now the next part is the co contribution. Now, or even in, not in the contribution, when we're talking about pension, we have, we're go only going to be, there's more than one, but we're only going to be talking about two of them in this one. So when you have a pension plan, there is a, the first one we are going to be talking about is when it's called, it's called the defined contribution, contribution plan. So this is the first one that we are going to be talking about is the defined contribution plan. When we think about it, just the word itself, your contribution is defined, means the, the we know the, uh, the contribution of the company is defined, means how much they should contribute. So once they contribute, like you said that the employer know how much they should contribute, then what they do is they contribute that amount they make the contribution and then it goes into a fund which is called a pension fund and that pension fund uh, could uh, is going to grow and then that pension fund is going to uh, give money to the retirees or issue checks to the retirees when they retire now the what is the difference between this uh, this plan and the other one that we're going to be talking about the first one is contribution means your contribution is defined, but all they do is the company this company says that we're going to contribute, let's say, a fifty dollars towards each employee. In this in this case, the company could have ten employees, so all they're going to do is contribute uh, five hundred dollars into the fund, and that fund, of course, is monitored by third company. It could go up and it could go down. Now. Be, the the advantage and disadvantage of contribution uh, plan is that now no mostly small companies use this uh, defined contribution plan. Uh, what they do is uh, when you have a defined contribution plan is the employee is the beneficiary of this plan. Employee is the sorry, employee is the um, employee is the beneficiary. So what happens is uh, beneficiary. Of the plan what happens is they put the company says that we're going to put this much money in there so the money could go up or money could go down they are not responsible of how much money the fund has at the time uh, the fund uh, at the time the employee retired the employee could have nothing or employee could have a lot of money depends on how well the fund is done so what they do that's what's the advantage to the companies they contribute and they wash their hands saying that we contributed now we're not going to deal with it. If there's a money in the fund, you'll get the money. If the money is not there, then you're not going to get any money. So they that's what's that's the the advantage to the uh, to the plan to the company is they put in one lump sum or they put in according to what the uh, actuary or the third party tells them how much they should contribute. They contributed. They're done with it. They have no other obligation after they contributed. Um, the money into the fund. So if the if the, if the company has if the fund has hundred thousand, that going to be distributed between these ten people. If the contribution has like a million dollar, that will be uh, according to um, to what the money is in there. If they have nothing, the employees will get nothing at the end. So that's what the defined contribution plan is. So the contribution is defined, not the benefit. So that let's see if we could uh, uh, show you uh, journal entries, um, how to do it. So this is uh, our first uh, example is de is a defined contribution plan. So uh, 